Hey guys, today we got an email from our good old friend Larry, and he's got a question about a heart. So we're going to get to the heart of the matter today. If it's Christian, we're talking about it. This is the Mike Charleston Show. All righty. Well, thank you for joining uh, the, the, the podcast if you're listening and on YouTube if you're watching and all that kind of stuff. Like and subscribe and whatever. Uh, but thank you for joining. We're going to be talking about the heart today and how to prepare the heart or whatever. It, this is a big subject. The reason why we're talking about it is because good old Larry, uh, you know, good old Larry, he emailed us and so he hasn't oh, forgotten Larry? us. Larry? Yep. What are you doing? He's emailing. That's what yep, he's doing. Yep. <laughs> and so he had a question, and we're gonna we're not we're gonna try not to make fun of him too much. Okay. Yeah, I'll try. It, this one's an easy one to just kind of throw darts and be like, Larry, come on, Larry. But it made me think. Let's let's we'll answer the question. But it does bring up some important questions about the heart and uh, and how we use the heart in our vocabulary, Christianese. Yes. As as Sarah calls it, Christianese. Because he does have something in his email that, that we're about to read that uh, is kind of ridiculous in some ways. And uh, But mm. let's go ahead and get it. Get well, to it. Before we do, you know, okay. I just have to say that, you know, I was I was reading over the notes and I heard the email from Larry and I'm reading over the notes for the show today trying to get prepared. And I, I have to be honest, my heart's not in it. Today. Oh, his heart's not prepared <laughs> for this. His heart's not in it. Wow. Why not? Why is your heart not in it? Well, okay. Well, we're going to have to get Chuck's heart changed here. So why don't you go ahead and read the email from good old Larry, Mr. LG. It says, first, great episodes. Really enjoyed the one about being called. Yeah. That, yeah, that's Larry. I'm still Larry. Yeah. That subject has a tendency to get me worked up. Probably good I wasn't there. Uh, probably. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, whatever. It would have been fun, but oh well. Yeah. Um, second, here is a question for you guys. Oh. What does the Bible mean when it uses the word heart? Okay, can we just stop right there? No, just We're read the whole email. Get very far. Okay. <laughs> We're not going to get very far. We're not going to get to the end of the email. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Pretty much. Okay, how about you just read the email and then we'll go back. Okay, this word is used often in Christianity and it seems the meaning is understood by all, but sometimes it doesn't make sense. For mm. example, in church, you might hear the phrase, let us prepare our hearts to hear what God wants to do. Mm. Well, how and what exactly do you mean? What about the song, Open the Eyes of Our Heart, Lord? Now my heart has eyes and I need God to open them. Yes, it has eyes, Larry. Mm. Anyway, perhaps Pam and you, Sarah, are Mm. right. I am way too cynical. Yes. Yes, you probably are. (laughs) Miss you guys and miss being part of the show. Mm. Missy dies? Oh, miss you guys. Missy dies. I was like, okay. Anyway, okay, so let's go back. Okay, so what, first this question was, what is the heart, right? So how is it when it's used in scripture? What does it mean? Yeah. All right. So traditionally, and what we can come up with, uh, because when we searched it, it's in the Bible over 700 times. Yeah. Okay. About 105 times in the New Testament, I think. I, I don't know. Uh, I just looked it up real quick. But it's in there a lot. Yeah. The heart, heart is in there a lot. The best guess, I mean, because the heart, you, you read the verse, it definitely means your emotions, your your mind, and your will, mm-hmm. or your, your volition, really, but your will, your mind, will, and emotions. That is, generally speaking, what everyone considers as the heart, right? Right. It, it's it, not... The vessel pumping blood. We found one verse. That's one verse. That, I mean, we didn't go through all 780 of them, but the, the there was one where Absalom got struck through his blood pumping vessel. Oh, okay. So his heart. Yeah, his he heart. got stuck through the heart. Yep. So he died uh, because of that. But that was the, the the physical heart. So very rarely does the word actually refer to your physical blood pumping vessel. Right. And Larry, you know that. Yes. <laughs> so, okay, so Larry, yes. what are you doing? So what does it mean then? Do you know, so our heart. So now, what Larry has done is brought in Christianese. What how we how we put it into the vernacular of the Christian world, where the pastor would say, "Let's prepare our hearts to receive the Lord's Supper." Let's prepare our hearts to receive God's word. Okay, I have a problem with that, but it's in the Bible. It, mm-hmm. the preparing your heart is in the Bible. I mean, we can pull up verses. So you have a problem with something that's in the Bible? No, I'm oh, going to okay. clarify. First, okay. I have to I have to admit, though, it's in the Bible, okay. where they do prepare their hearts. They, they, there's a number of times when they're going to meet the Lord, they must be prepared. Mm-hmm. Like, you don't, you don't just show up and be like, yo, God, what's up? I, I was actually... 
kind of surprised how many times it yeah. was there. I, I, <laughs> I have to admit that when I saw the file. Well, and I, I, I will say, I don't think this list is exhausted. I, I wouldn't think so. I, that was, that was a pretty quick list there. I mean, so you got, a couple, a, you got a couple verses just off the I, top. I, I do. Well, because, okay, the whole idea of preparing your heart to take communion, I grew up with that. You know, right. you're in church and it becomes very somber moment. And it's like, all right, we need to prepare to take communion because... You might die. <laughs> something like that. I, I mean, something. <laughs> you know, you don't want to eat unworthily or whatever. Right, right. And so it's like, you know, if you have any unconfessed sin. I, I never or... got the idea that you might die. Oh, right. Yeah. I mean, it's okay, just, well, I never not... saw anybody fall out. You know? so well, I, was I like, never I did either. So, but... but it seemed like a very serious moment. <laughs> yeah, and like, yeah. you need to check because if yeah. you have unconfessed sin, now's the time. If you're not right with the Lord, with there's it. issues. Don't, so, don't, right. don't take unworthily. Right. 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 So, so I mean, with that thought in mind, I was like, okay, so, but now. Can I can I tackle that verse? Though, Just a second, because okay. stepping away from, you know, church for this many years. Uh, <laughs> wow. Um, I'm like, so is this just a Christianese thing? Yes. Or is it biblical? And I went and searched, and it's actually biblical. Yeah. Yeah. Biblical to prepare your heart, sure. Yes. Now, in Old Testament, you won't find that okay, in the New Testament. Okay, not for communion, like they're uh, right. saying. Okay. So the problem I have with, like, communion and all that, it specializes a certain event, like the Lord's Supper, and then that's a special event, I, I'll say, but it's not like, to, you don't, nothing happens at the Lord's Supper. It's not like you get saved. It's not like, it, it's just, it's a, it's a picture of us as believers joining together yeah. in the unity of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And that's important. There's no doubt about it. But to prepare for that, like, what do you have to do? What the pastors usually mean by that is get right with the Lord, confess your sins, and just really meditate on the Lord. Mm -hmm. My problem with that is, shouldn't we do that anyways? All the time. Like, if, if I have unconfessed sin, or whatever that means, you know, if I'm not right with the Lord, shouldn't I get, do I have to wait for the Lord? Do I have to prepare myself to, to meet something or should I just get right with the Lord? Well, people would probably say you should do it all the time, but seeing that most of us don't, here's Be, a Why? Here's because a the system has, per, has well, produced true. this. Yeah. That's, mm -hmm. that's the whole point. Yeah. But, okay, so let's get back to the heart of the matter here. No, no pun intended. <laughs> yeah, I think it was. Pre prepare your heart is in the Old Testament. And there mm -hmm. is definitely times where... They are going to meet the Lord, and you have to prepare. Now, what does it mean to prepare your heart? So you're going to receive something from the Lord, right? Mm -hmm. You have to prepare. How do you prepare? That's a good question. Well, there's a number of times where they did special cleansings. You know, there was yes. they abstained mm -hmm. from certain things. Yeah. They they did ritual type things to prepare to meet with the Lord, and yeah. and I think that's very valid and very important. I think we should do that all the time to prepare to meet the Lord. Well, and in the, the Old Testament, it was very scripted. Like, I mean, it's all written out for you. All the steps that. You you need to do right. in order to go and meet with God, in order right. to do a sacrifice. And like, it was all laid out very clearly. Well, what's the word that you came up with that was kind of like prepare? Fix. Fix. Like Sometimes you, you fix instead your heart. of saying prepare your heart, I'll say I fix my heart or right. I set my heart. Set, set it up. Those so are the same word. How do I prepare? So every day I prepare for the day, right? And so are we supposed to prepare our hearts for the Lord? Well, that should always be, I, I compared it to uh, like a field. A field. Yeah, a field. And that is, it's a hard field. It hasn't rained in a while. It's, you know, my field out there right now is pretty hard. But when it rains, it's very soft and you can get stuck in, in it. And, you know, so we want it to be follow ground. We want it to be kind of turned. And But how do I produce that? It's, it's like, okay, we have everything we need in Christ Jesus, right? Christ Jesus has yeah. produced all these things in our lives, but it doesn't just happen, right? Like it just doesn't, like all of a sudden we have everything and we're good now. Like we have to know these things. We have to learn yeah. these things. We have to learn who we are in Christ. We have to understand what Christ has done for us, right? I agree, but I'm not sure if Chuck Oh, Chuck, I'm, 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 I'm not like disagreeing he's... with you. I'm oh, just okay. trying to understand where you're going with it. Okay. okay. So my heart is still my heart. Now, God has given me a new heart when I got saved. Right. But it's not a, it's not a perfect, pure heart in the sense that all of a sudden it knows all, all things about God. No. Okay. okay. I have to prepare my heart to learn things from God. Yeah. So if, if God is wanting to share something with me, if I don't go to the scriptures, I'm not going to learn. If I don't listen to someone, you know, who's teaching, I'm not going to learn. It's not going to just be deposited into my body 
uh, you know, in my pillow, you know, when I go to bed. No, I totally agree. And people say, well, you know, I don't hear God speak to me. And I'm like, well, you don't listen. Right, you don't I'm try. Like, he is speaking to all of us, mostly through his word. But I'm like, people, you know, I mean, do you think that just in the middle of your day, you're all of a sudden going to get this text from God? Or get you know some sort of audible well, there is thing a movie when you're about that, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, there is. Well, most of the time, no. But most of the time, when I'm seeking God and I'm saying, "Lord, please show me," that then I start to see. It's like, right. oh wow, He's showing me what I'm supposed to do here. But it's because I'm I'm prepared. I'm looking for it. I'm seeking that. Right. And you're so, setting your affections on things above, I not am. on things on the earth, right? right? And so that so we're we're kind of getting a field. But why don't we read some of the verses where it talks about preparing our heart? Okay, so Psalm ten seventeen says, Lord, thou hast heard the desire of the humble, thou wilt prepare their heart, thou wilt cause thine ear to hear. So how does God prepare their heart? I say this one, I don't prepare, he prepares. So. Right. He's right. preparing their heart, you know, so that they can hear. How does he do that? You know, that is that is an interesting question. That that yeah. is a fair question to ask. Okay, what's the next one? First Samuel seven three and Samuel spake unto all the house of Israel, saying, If ye do return unto the Lord with all your hearts, then put away the strange gods and Ashtaroth from among you, and prepare your hearts unto the Lord and serve him only, and he will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines. Sounds like that's how you prepare your hearts, right? Is to get rid to of away. all the strange gods. Right. All yeah. Ashtaroth and all that mm-hmm. and turn back to God. Yeah. You're preparing to receive from the Lord mm-hmm. because he wants to bless, but you are living in sin. Yep. Serve and, him. Right. And you're serving other gods. Okay, why don't we go to the next one? First Chronicles twenty nine eighteen says, O Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, our fathers, keep this forever in the imagination of the thoughts of the heart of thy people and prepare their heart unto thee. Another one where God right. is going to prepare their heart. Yeah, keeping them in their thoughts and in their intents. Where we'll find out later, some, some thoughts and intents of the heart are evil and wicked. So, yeah. I, when he says this to God, and <clears throat> I don't know how many, I think everybody listening probably would agree with me that you had the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Sure, sure. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the Holy Spirit doesn't come and dwell, and dwell right. in us until, you know, in the, until the New Testament. Right. Mm-hmm. But um, it, would that be, would this be a job of the Holy Spirit when he says that God's going to prepare their heart? Right. I, I would say I would so. I would think so. Right. A softening yeah. the heart. How, how do, you know, by little bits and pieces that would, uh, a little here, a little there, and someone's like, huh, you know, like if I'm, if I want to hear from the Lord and I'm not praising Him, I'm not thanking Him, I'm not reading His Word, I'm not meditating on Him, it's going to be really hard to receive from the Lord. So yeah. if I'm preparing to receive, how do I prepare? Praising Him, thanking Him, meditating. You know, that's that's a, that's a preparation. And because that doesn't do anything necessarily, it doesn't like it doesn't earn any favor with God. Mm. It doesn't do anything mm. like in that regard, but it, it does get my heart in the right place to hear from the Lord. Right. Does that make so sense? So you think about if you've got guests coming over to visit. Sure. What are you gonna do? Well, uh, <laughs> hopefully. You're, you're going to prepare. Yes. You want to get things ready. Clean the sheets. Things it depends ready. on who it is. You know, uh, <laughs> we've got my mother-in-law's got guests coming. Right. You know, and so. Today, Jeannie and the kids, they were over there helping her prepare for the guests that are right. Yeah. So that, that's the idea here is that you're preparing the heart or God's preparing your heart. Somebody's doing it yep. in order to be able to receive whatever it is that he wants to give to you. And yeah. not just to receive, but to give too. I mean, mm-hmm. the kind of like in your, your scenario... We're trying to be a blessing to others. When you go out witnessing, if you haven't, you know, thought about anything, God could still use you, and mm-hmm. you can you can pull on reserves. That's for sure, and, and someone could still get saved. Mm-hmm. But it really helps if you prepared yourselves. You know, like we we go and pray before we go out. Why? You know, because it's important. You know, like yeah. okay, well, we want God to be with us in this endeavor, and you know, let my mind be pure, and let my mind be clear, and let my thoughts be clear. What is that? What is my mind and my thoughts? It's my heart. So that's what we're preparing our heart to right. to go and minister. So it's also to minister. It's not just to receive. It's also to minister. Uh, what other verse? All right. So I have this. This is about Rehoboam. Oh, and Rehoboam. I found this rather interesting. Okay. Second Chronicles 11, 16 and 17 says, And after them, out of all the tribes of Israel, such such as set their hearts to seek the Lord God of Israel came to Jerusalem to sacrifice unto the Lord God of their fathers. So they strengthened the kingdom of Judah and made Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, strong. Three years, for three years, they walked in the way of David and Solomon. Wow, because they set their hearts. Yes, but then you go on and in um, the... It's the next chapter, verse 14. It says, and he did evil because he prepared not his heart to seek the Lord. So, so the people did. 
Right. But he didn't. Yeah. So, I mean, he did well for a while, and then it says he did evil. But why? Because he prepared not his heart to seek the Lord. And then in uh, 2 Chronicles 12, 1, right before that, it says, And it came to pass when Rehoboam had established the kingdom and had strengthened himself, he forsook the law of the Lord and all Israel with him. So, to me, it's like that's how he didn't prepare his heart because he forsook, forsook the, the law of the Lord. He forsook what he was supposed to do. Right. Yeah. And that's yeah. not preparing your your heart yeah. for the Lord. So, so Larry, we're not I'm trying to pick on you here, but if you just did a search for a heart... Man, you got to get your Bible out. And read. <laughs> <laughs> there is a number of times where they... they prepared their heart. And, and so, okay, we want to go back to this, like this idiom here, like open the eyes of my heart. Okay. So first you are, you were pointing about what, what, how Christians use the word and I get it. You know, we use certain terms. We've got Christianese. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with that at all. I, well, think, the, I think oftentimes we get into Christianese when we we're do. talking to people yeah. and it makes no sense to somebody no. who's not a Christian. Right. If you really think yeah. about it, yeah. you're like, well, what are we doing? Yeah. Like, why well, I do mean, we... the biggest one being, we say, ask Jesus into your heart. Yeah. 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 And right. so it's like, okay, you know, and so I'll say this prayer after me and we, did did you ask Jesus into your heart? But it's like, what does that mean? Yeah, he's in my life. But yeah, but we 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 understand. But it's someone's like, I, I, is he in my but left somebody ventricle? That, yeah, somebody he, who doesn't understand is like, what are you talking about? Right. right. But you know, the 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 Bible is full of uh, similes and metaphors and it's true it figures is. of speech. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so, and some of our songs you know, are we get too. The, we get the idea of the heart being the, the mind or the will or, and the seat of emotion. Then you right. get to also same references at times to the bowels. Bowels. So yeah. you know, it's yeah. used interchangeably. So prepare your bowels, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> As you get older, you got to prepare your bowels a little bit more. But the, um, the, uh, the, so it's not like you were saying in your email, like does your eyes, the, the eyes of my heart. Okay. For one, that's a song. Mm-hmm. And um, there is a lot of poetry and figurative language when we, we use the word heart. And we yeah. just pulled up a number of verses here. We didn't do the Ezra one. Um, do you want to do the Ezra one first? Yeah, okay, let's give it. Um, so we just we just searched the word heart in the New Testament and just scrolled through. So some of these are very just, we just picked some at random. Yeah. Okay, so why don't we go ahead and read some of these? These are kind of figurative and some of them are talking about what we're talking about. So why don't we start? So Matthew 6, 21 says, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Okay, so by Larry's logic, sorry, Larry, but my physical heart is in my bank account or... Is that your treasure? No, we know what that means. It's like where my treasure is, the things that are important to me. There is my mind, will, emotions, all those, the, the things that I set my affections on are there. Okay. That's pretty, I think it's pretty easy. I think yeah, we it's know pretty that easy. You, I mean, Your heart, whatever right. you're talking about here, when we're describing the heart, is going to follow after those yeah, things. Exactly. Yeah, it's, they're connected. Yes. Okay, Matthew, or go to the next one. Matthew twelve thirty four. O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Money! <laughs> yes, that's, that mm-hmm. was them. <laughs> so. Which actually goes with the next one. Mark seven twenty one says, For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders. So does my heart have a brain now? Of course it does. Your heart is, your, is kind of who you are. It can be your mind, your will, your emotions, everything that is surrounded by that. And here it talks about, uh, what does that verse say again? For from within? Yeah, from within. Out of the heart, the heart proceeds evil thoughts and right. adulteries and fornications and all this Sins, these yes. bad things. And hopefully, you know, it can either you get do saved, good or it can do bad. Right. When you get saved, it's reverse, it should mm-hmm. be, that we're thinking of good things now. And uh, anyway, next verse. Uh, Luke 6, 45, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil for of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. Right. Uh, those, these are all Luke speaking said about it better the same. than we did. Oh, they're right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay, what's next? And like I said, we were just picking randomly. Just this is a good one. Okay, oh, this is there's a lot of verses on the heart. Um, Acts five three. But Peter said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? So can your heart speak and lie? Is is he, he lied to the Holy Ghost? Is in his heart to lie? So that's yeah. where it was, it was in his mind to lie. It was in his thoughts, and he was going to lie to the Holy Ghost. That's your heart. That's what your heart is, your, what you're thinking on, what you're meditating on, what you're planning on doing, you know, that's your, what you will to do. I mean, it your, sort of seems like your heart is mostly w- related to your thoughts. Right. Absolutely. I mean, you know, we say mind, will, emotions, and I mean, those are all kind of connected, but it's like mostly what I think 
because it's also what I think has to do with what I believe. And so that's why when we say believe in the Lord with all your heart, right. you know, it's, it's related to my mind. Right. So. right, right. And, and I think more in the scriptures, it's more of your mind and will than your emotions, even though emotions are part of it. Probably yeah. more in the Old Testament, maybe in Psalms or something. But it's, it's, it's the mind and, and, and the will. So you're willing yourself this direction. Are you willing yourself? Yeah. So anyway. It's also, it's also kind of a, you can think of it as ways well, the heart can actually be the check. Because I mean, you can have a thought, mm-hmm. but not act on it. But out mm-hmm. of the heart comes right. the action. So it's yeah. kind of a check there. To stop you from doing something, yeah. Because you if your heart is good, your mm-hmm. your heart wants to do its right. It's going to be like, no. What what are we doing? I'm right. not. I don't want to think like that. I don't. Let's meditate on the Lord. Let's you know. Hey, let's prepare our heart. <laughs> so anyway, what's the next verse here? We got Romans. Romans ten eight through ten. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So there we have a quick picture of the heart and the mouth working together here. Mm-hmm. So the yeah. the kind of the spiritual and then the physical. You know where it's the the heart is more spiritual. We can't really see it. It's the the mind, the will, you know, emotions, right. the emotions. The, well, the, you get the the, the, the the verbiage here is that the man believes with his heart. Yes. Right. And then confession is made with the mouth, which I think is very important that I can think a lot of things in my mind, but until I like verbalize it and say, yeah. no, Jesus yeah. is the Christ, mm-hmm. I do believe yeah. that. Yeah. You know, because I can be meditating and be like, hmm, is Buddha God? Is he the way, the truth? And so I'm thinking about it. Mm-hmm. It doesn't make it true. No. But no, like, no, 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 that's not true. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. So it's con- very connected. What what your heart is. So to prepare your heart for the Lord, you know, we, it's not really a New Testament concept. It doesn't, the phrase doesn't show up in the New Testament, but it is in the Old Testament a lot. But when you're preparing it, it's, 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 it's fixing your eyes. It's setting those uh, things, your will, your mind, your emotions, even however you do that, you know, you, you, you keep them in check, I guess, but your mind and your will specifically is directed toward the Lord so that when temptation comes, it's easier to overcome because it's like, Hey, this is what I, I don't want this. Mm -hmm. But if you're not preparing, if you're you're sitting around just playing video games and watching movies and watching Netflix and, and just having a bunch of fun, when temptation comes, you haven't prepared yourself to overcome. You've prepared yourself to fail. That's what you've prepared. Okay. What's next? Hebrews. Hebrews 4.12, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper oh, than good one. any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So the, the heart can actually think, has intents. Mm-hmm. And, As I was saying, I think it's mostly related to our thoughts. Yeah, it is. It is. And and so the, the, sword, the word of God can cut through that, you know, even the, yeah. the, the heart and the intents and the, the thoughts of the heart. Yeah. So think about that. So that, that's a good picture of what like the heart is. It's a, it's a thought and intent and will and yeah. thoughts and will. Right. Another one in Hebrews, right? Hebrews 13, 9, be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines for it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, not with meats, which have not profited them that have been occupied therein. So I got this one for Larry because, you know, we don't want him to to go off into strange doctrines. And <laughs> so, like, what in the world? I don't understand. You, you know, we love Larry and uh, his diverse and strange Larry. doctrines. Ah! Yeah, Larry. Um, but let your heart be established with grace. So your, your heart is established. And so when you're singing things like, open the eyes of my heart, you can roll your eyes all you want, mm-hmm. but it's figurative language that is like my heart, my mind, my will. my emo- I want that open to God. So open the eyes. And you say, well, is God going to do that? Well, if you read in the Old Testament, he sure did. He he helped prepare uh, for them. So that's what I want. I want to, if you listen to the rest of the song, it was open the eyes of my heart. Um, Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. I want to see you to see you high and lifted up. Right. I want to see you. And and so I want to see the Lord. I want to know the Lord. And in order to do that, I have to have my heart set on him. And, And that works together. Like he doesn't just deposit things in me when I don't want it, you yeah. know, I do have to prepare my heart. This isn't work salvation. This isn't, you know, works and things that you have to do, but it does help. Like, how do I know what the Bible says unless I read it? 
How do yeah. I know the heart of God if I don't pray? You know, if I don't give thanks and and and, and worship Him and prepare myself to to know Him more. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think God has many resources for all of us, but if we're not open to receiving them, He doesn't force them no. on us. So I mean, no. I, I was just listening to a testimony of a lady, and she was talking about, you know, just this these things God did for her. And I thought, you know, so many people miss stuff like that because they're not looking for it. We just go through our lives and we're not seeking, we're not asking, we're not hoping, we're not, you know, right. anything. So I'm like, well, God's not going to force him into our lives more than we want him. Right. So I think it's good to prepare your heart. It's good to prepare your heart. And how that looks, Larry, is like we just said, you know, why don't you pray, read your Bible, go to church. I don't know. Man. I'm just <laughs> Well, you, you don't just think with your mind, you have to think with your heart. Yes. Yeah, yeah that's a good point. Yeah. And direct I think that's what it. Pam's been trying to tell you for all that's time. That's right. <laughs> direct, direct, your, direct your heart. And it is a mental thing, but it is also an emotional thing. And like, do you feel like worshiping the Lord? Mm -hmm. I, I don't always feel like worshiping the Lord. That's when you direct it. And there's other times where I feel like it. My emotions yeah. are part of it. Like, man, I look forward to worshiping the Lord. And usually it's a bigger event, like the camp. Speaking of which, a lay alone family camp is coming up soon. Uh, you know, there's still Time's spots available. Short. Yeah, yep. Yeah, we got about eight weeks more, eight weeks, something like that. Yeah. We got and, five, uh, six rooms left. Yeah, that was a, that was a shameless plug right there. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we do look forward to seeing you guys. Uh, it is a family camp. Uh, kids of all ages are welcome. And uh, so we do look forward to that. Yeah, but, but anyway, we have to prepare for that. Yeah. Because we want that to be a good time. Right. And yeah. so we look forward to events like that. Not that every Sunday um, isn't great or anything like that, but it is something special when we mm -hmm. get together, yeah. a bigger group, and we want to sing and be like, oh, this is great hearing hundreds of people singing How Great Thou Art yeah, or something I mean, like that. That's the purpose of it, to give us the opportunity to get together and encourage one another yeah. and uh, help each other and just lift, that's up, it. lift up some yep. praise to God. Yep. Well, and that's the that's the main thing. If if people are haven't turned off by now, but to prepare your heart is more for service, in my opinion. In the New Testament, is that if how can I help someone if I'm not prepared, you know? And and so I know that sounds kind of trite and like, oh, I got to go study. And well, yeah, why not? You know, it, it's if you don't know how to witness, learn. If you don't know how to yeah. comfort someone, learn. You prepare your heart, like Lord. Soften my heart so I can help others. You know, Lord, help me uh, learn to serve these people. How do I do that? You know, and if you ask, he, he will. <laughs> you know, he will show you. Yeah. So anyways, we could go on for days and talk about the heart because there is a lot of verses. And uh, if you just do a little Google search, not even a Google search, go to your Bible app yep. that you use. Which Google one do you use? Uh, I use Blue Letter Bible on my okay. phone and I use a sort searcher on my computer. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. We use Blue Letter Bible, pretty much. Yeah. And Bible Gateway. A little bit. Anyway, that's any last words? No. Is your, is your heart good. turned now? Yeah, I'm better. I'm ready. <laughs> so Scott, I'm he's in better. It. He's ready. He's prepared his heart for the missionary stories. That's right. All right. How well do you know your Bible? All right. Well, as we get further in, I'm I'm realizing I probably don't know my Bible as well as I should. <laughs> <laughs> so, no. But today, so we we are going to do both Ezra and Nehemiah. Yeah. And you know, that's how they had it originally, and eventually, kind of like the other ones, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, first and second, they, they broke them apart, which is fine. And um, but we're gonna keep it together because there's gonna be a couple books later on that we want to probably keep, we're going to break it up ourselves. Yeah. Something like Psalms or something like that. Yeah. But anyway, so Ezra and Nehemiah, we are going to uh, get to, to this one today. So Ezra and Nehemiah is basically the story of three people, right? Yeah. Zerubbabel. Or Zerubbabel. It's a fun Zerubbabel. name to say. Zerubbabel, <laughs> Ezra, and Nehemiah. Right. Uh, pretty simple. You got Ezra and Nehemiah. You just have to learn about Zerubbabel. Yeah. And so you got to remember, we are. where are we in this timeline? We, if, if we had like a little timeline thing here, um, they are in captivity. Mm -hmm. The Jews are in captivity. They're in Babylon, and they're, they're there for 70 years, right? Right. And they don't want to be in Babylon, or at least some of them don't, as we're going to find out. 
I a mean, good number of them stay back. I say I would have thought they don't want to be in Babylon, right. but yeah, after they're allowed to come back, it seemed like a very small percentage right. actually went back. So Jerusalem, uh, you know, is in is in uh, shambles. You know, yeah. they've they've been conquered, and it's just they destroyed the temple it, and they destroyed everything. It's yeah. it's a wasteland, right? Basically, um, so Zerubbabel wants to go and rebuild the temple. Mm -hmm. And so he goes and rebuilds the temple. Yeah. And it's not as magnificent as the original no. and not even close. No. And um, uh, so then later on, we have Ezra, mm -hmm. who is commissioned by King Xerxes or Artaxerxes. Uh, yeah. Ar yeah, Artaxerxes. And um, he tells him to go back, take some people with him. And that's where we find out not so many people. Not wanna, so many, which I, I did read that it was 900 miles from Babylon to Jerusalem. And I'm like, wow, that's, I mean, for us in a car, like that's a good trip. But I'm like, yeah. they didn't have cars. No, that's so a I'm trip. Like, that's a that's a good ways. Yeah, that's almost, that's about as far as from us to my mom and dad's house. Right. And I don't like that trip. <laughs> It takes a long time. <laughs> it's a long trip. So yeah, but it was a hike. That's for sure. Yeah. And uh, so what? Do we, so then Ezra, he is more in charge of rebuilding the spiritual atmosphere. Right. He he comes back with the law and establishes right. back the law because a lot of them have forgotten about the law and, yeah. and stuff like that. Um, and then a little while later, Nehemiah gets sent by uh, King Art Artaxerxes. Art Art <laughs> I can't pronounce his name. He comes back to rebuild the walls. The walls have been torn down. Right. And uh, now this was an interesting one because God didn't necessarily tell him to do this. No. This is just something he wanted. He saw the walls in disrepair and he wanted to build it. So the walls are, have been repaired. The temple's been rebuilt and the people are in the land. Mm -hmm. What's missing? The king? The king. There yeah. is no king. Yeah. And and so this is, it kind of ends on a downer, you know, where like, okay, well, where's the king? And right. it goes, it basically goes up to the uh, intertestinal period, basically. Where, the 400 years right. between the Old and New Testament. Right. Yeah. So where we're, it goes right up to about that time, about the Maccabean uh, uh, era. Mm -hmm. But uh, we're going to have that 400 years of silence here. You yeah. know, we always think of like Malachi as being the last book. Well, it We'll explain that in a little bit, right. you know, where you have the prophets and all that are all sprinkled back into all these stories that we just have gone right. through, the yeah, history I of Israel. I think Malachi is a contemporary of at least Nehemiah, so probably Ezra too, from right. what I read. So, yeah. Sure. But in our Bible, it's, you know, we have so many books, so it's like we got a long ways to go before we get there. It's but. like they put the history books in and then they put the prophets. But if you have one of those chronological books, they mix in the prophets and, and stuff with the, the history, right. history line. Yeah. But. I actually, I read that somebody compared Nehemiah to Moses. Interesting. In, in the same way that Moses left the palace to go and to... Sure. Because Nehemiah know, be was a cupbearer. And Nehemiah was a cupbearer and then Instead of staying there in the palace, he goes and wants to rebuild a wall. Right. So. He wants to rebuild. It, it's a interesting take. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, I was like, oh, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah, I hadn't heard that before. But yeah, he. But I, I think um, I don't know if he, he he did he choose to go or he was sent. I think he wanted to go. Yeah. But anyway, this this takes us up to the intertestinal period of the 400 years before Christ, and so we're getting closer. Yeah. We're getting closer, yeah. but as as Nehemiah, I think it was Nehemiah, found out that the people are in shambles. The they're, mm. the the temple's being neglected. the The wall is actually not doing so well. The um, uh, spiritual atmosphere of the Jews they're not really keeping the law. So it's like we need something here. We need right. a revival of sorts. We need Messiah to come, and that's kind of where it leaves off. There's a cliffhanger. And if you like storytelling, you know, there's a cliffhanger. And so by the time we get to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, it's like their spiritual condition is weak. Now, the Pharisees and Sadducees and all of them are trying to get the spiritual level back up to, right. and they're really keeping the law uh, hard. But uh, there's a lot missing. And yeah. that's why when Messiah comes on the scene, it's a big, big, big deal. But uh, they are looking for someone to lead them mil militarily. Honestly, yeah. they're they're trying to right. deliver from their enemies. That's that's how they see it. But uh, they're they're going to be shocked when Jesus comes on the scene. But anyway, yeah. what else do we have for here about Ezra and Nehemiah? That's about it. That's about it. Yeah. Uh, no other key verses or anything like no, that. No, I didn't. I don't know that there are really a lot of key verses in but Ezra. And it's, Nehemiah. it's a story, and it's an interesting story. You know, they're they're coming from the the. Um, 
captivity. Right. And so you have to understand that they're probably not keeping the they haven't kept the law probably in Babylon. There's no, no, no. Fe- festivals, no feasts, no anything. Well, maybe they kept festivals. I don't know. Do you think that's maybe why so many didn't want to come back? <laughs> I don't know. I, I mean, you get comfortable, and maybe Babylon was a comfortable place to live, and they're like, "Well, hey, maybe this is the good. Why do I want to go back to a place that has no walls? The temple is kind of right. not as good as the other temple. Um, you know, there's a there's a lot of reasons. Yeah. You know, not to not to go back. And um, hey, they didn't want to. They wanted to go back to Egypt and be well, slaves. That's true. So you <laughs> yeah. know, but uh, but no, uh, who knows? But eventually they came back. And they never really had a king, I don't think, until... Well, they don't really have a king today. But they, they really haven't had their own leaders in place. Even during Jesus' time, uh, the Romans were, were ruling over them. They until, call them like uh, vassal kings or something? Like yes. somebody would put somebody yes. in power, but it wasn't the way God anointed a king. Right, exactly. Them, yeah. So that line... has so, so that's where Israel is, where they think... All is lost mm-hmm. because the the promised Messiah is not going to come, and you know who's going to save us. And uh, so that's why a lot of the Israelites today are backslidden. They, they are right. they're, they're, a lot of them are atheists. Yeah. They, they don't believe God uh, has kept His promises or never was because there was no God. You know they don't believe in it. Mm-hmm. So anyway, it gets interesting. But we're going to uh, be getting into a lot of those prophets and and things like that, which we refer back to Samuel. Kings, Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, all these stories. So anyway, that is the book of Ezra and Nehemiah. Nehemiah. Missionary Stories with Chuck. All right, Chuck, I am looking at your notes. I'm yeah. not supposed to look at my notes, and you don't have a name at the top. You have question marks. That's right. So, ooh, so the today, suspense. the missionary story today is going to be a challenge for y'all to see which one of you are going to get oh. the name first. Oh, I feel mm. pressure And you can't just now. throw guesses out. Okay. Okay. It can't be random guesses. It's got to be, you know, I'm really... Sincere guesses. Yes, sincere guesses. With my heart. I'm gonna, yeah, that's right. I, I'll, I'll do it honestly. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm ready. I'm prepared. And this isn't some obscure missionary. I wouldn't do that to you. Okay, right. <laughs> okay. Are we ready? Yes. I All think right. I might lose. <laughs> oh, come on. Here we go. So our missionary story for today. One day as a boy, he came across a tract in his father's office. Oh. He casually sat down to read it, and at the same time, his mother, some 70 miles away, felt an urgent burden to pray for her son. As he read, he puzzled over the phrase, the finished work of Christ, wondering mm. what it meant, what was finished. He realized Christ was a How old was he about this time? A young son. Just a young. As, as young. a boy. Yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He realized Christ had accomplished everything he needed for salvation. All his efforts at trying to be a Christian were for naught. All he had to do was believe. His mother prayed for hours until she felt sure that her prayers had been answered. When she came home, she was so sure that he had been saved while she was gone that he thought his sister had told her. Oh, wow. He was a pioneer missionary to China They're all in the going 1800s. To China. <laughs> yeah, they, they all go to China in the 1800s. <laughs> During a time when China was especially Is it hostile. William Carey? You can't no, just we throw did that one already. But I, thought, I wonder if we did that yeah, one. Well, we did that I thought one it was William Carey. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> At a time when China was especially hostile and suspicious of foreigners, he suffered much hardship uncomplainingly and purposefully lived as simple a life as possible, even before going to China, to prepare himself. Mm. Aren't they um, still suspicious of foreigners? <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah. He wanted to convert people to Christ in their own culture rather than converting them to Western culture. Good idea. He dressed as a Chinaman. I I know this guy. Much to the dismay and criticism of the overseas European community and and even other missionaries, simply because he found that the most effective way to work with that, the most effective way to work with the Chinese. Probably the most notable of his aspects while he was... Probably the most notable of his aspects were his simple childlike faith mm. and his unswerving obedience to what he perceived God wanted him to do. Once before going to the field, he heard of a family in dire need and went to visit them. He felt he should give them the last money he had, but he wrestled with himself over it. Finally, he yielded. The next day, he received in the mail several times more than he had given. Nice. I can tell, I can tell the listeners right now are like... 
They're saying the name. Oh, you think so? Oh, yeah. Well, I know who it is. I can't, I can't think, think of his of name. No, you got, you got he, the picture, huh? Because he he went to China. He shaved his head like the China China men. For some reason, I have William Carey in my mind, and I can't <laughs> get that out of my mind. Hmm. So anyway, go yep. on. Before he went to China, the girl he had planned to marry refused his proposal because she did not want to go to China. What? Mm -hmm. He wrote to his mother, quote, Trusting God does not deprive one of feelings or deaden our natural sensibilities, but enables us to compare our trials with our mercies and to say, quote, Yet notwithstanding, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Wow. Still don't I know. I thought she was giving me a I name. No, she didn't know. I, yeah. I don't have a name yet. <laughs> Once during a storm on the way to China in a ship, he took off a life jacket because he felt he was trusting in it rather than the Lord. This sounds like people in my Bible college. <laughs> so, yes. Later, he realized wow. that was wrong thinking and yeah. wrote. <laughs> The use of means ought not to lessen our faith in God. Absolutely. And our faith in God ought not to hinder whatever means He has given us for the accomplishment mm. of His own purposes. When in medical or surgical ca charge of any case, I have never thought of neglecting to ask God's guidance and blessing in the use of appropriate means. To me, it would appear presumptuous and wrong to neglect the use of those measures which He Himself has put within our reach as to neglect to take daily food and suppose that life and health might be maintained by prayer alone. He was later said to be, quote, a man of prayer, but it was prayer associated with action. He prayed about things as if Everything depended upon the praying, but he worked also as if everything depended upon the working. All right, now I'm going to give you some better hints. You're oh, ready? Okay. Come on. I, we, so we far, should, it's very general. We right? should get it by now. I mean, I, I know <laughs> who this is. I just To live in inland China in the 1800s meant giving up what would be considered Western luxuries, and nope. he tried hard to give a real picture of the mission field before new missionaries came over. The only person's wanted here are those who will rejoice to work, really to labor, not to dream their lives away, to deny themselves, to suffer in order to save. Mm -hmm. He wrote to applicants, if you want hard work and little appreciation of it, value God's approbation more than for man's disapprobation and are prepared, if need be, to steal, to seal your testimony with your blood and perhaps oftentimes take joyfully the spoiling of your goods, you may count on a harvest of souls here and a crown of glory that does not fade away and the master's well done. Hmm. It is no question of making the best of both worlds. The men who will be happy with us are those who have this world under their feet. He did not set out to start a mission agency. We're not doing good. But the agency which sent him out failed miserably. They mm. failed to advise or prepare him, failed to forward funds and communicate with him when he was on the field, causing other missions agencies to step in and help. The necessity of a mission agency attuned to the needs in China and responsibilities in its habits, in its habits led him to begin the China Inland Mission. Yeah, that should give it away right there. Yeah, I actually had the name before that. Okay. Because I figured you would have got it by now. There were a few missionaries in the bigger cities, but he wanted to go inland where the Gospels had not been preached. He was known to be a humble and unassuming man. Many meeting him for the first time were surprised that he didn't, quote, stand out, but looked at first like a regular Chinaman. Many mm -hmm. times he quietly and unassumingly helped and ministered to others, especially new arrivals. Once, when a group he was with had to spend a night on a boat with a leper, and someone complained about the stench of his bedding, Hudson spent the night in his uh, cabin. Uh, Hudson Taylor. Company. There Come you on. go. Yes. <laughs> yes. Wow. Uh, how did I not get wow. <laughs> Hudson uh, spent the night in his cabin uncomplainingly and bought him a new bedding the next day. Mm -hmm. Another time when an exhausted group of travelers fell into bed without eating, Hudson prepared omelets for them all. Once when he knew of a paper that was critical of him, almost derogatory, he mm -hmm. said, quote, that is a very just criticism, for it's all true. I've often thought that God made me little in order that he might show what a great God he is. In mm -hmm. one meeting, Hudson said, what we give up for Christ, we gain, and what we keep back is our real loss. Let us make earth a little less homelike and souls more precious. Mm -hmm. Jesus is coming again, and so soon. Will he really find us 
obeying his last command. He also said, quote, I used to ask God to help me. Then I asked if I might help him. I ended up by asking him to do his work through me. Mm. Yep. So Hudson Taylor, yep. the missionary story of the day. If you want to read more about him, there's a lot written yes, about Hudson is. Taylor. Yeah. Um, Can't believe def- it took us that long. Yeah, I the, def- know. the definitive biography on him is a two-volume set. Wow. Um, wow. Hudson Taylor in early years, The Growth of a Soul, and Hudson Taylor and the China Inland Mission, The Growth of a Work of God, uh, written by his daughter and son-in-law, Dr. and Mrs. Howard Taylor. Mm. The first volume, I'll tell you, as they warn here, the first volume is over 500 pages, and the second, so well, over notes. 600, yeah. so it's oh, going to wow. take a way wow. to read through them, but um, yeah, a lot written about Hudson yeah. Taylor, and there's uh, many wow. other books, um, uh, and I'm sure some films out there yeah, about there's him. Been yeah, there's been lots of things. Um, but he, yeah, he... he Dedicated his life to service to the Chinese, wanted to bring the gospel yep. to them, see the soul saved, and um, began the China Unlimited. He's, he's one of those missionaries I really appreciated because he didn't try to bring Western culture, mm-hmm. and yeah. and he, he brought Jesus, yeah. and he tried to be one of them as much as without compromising, obviously, and because uh, there's one thing of going into a culture and then just doing what the Catholics did, they would just take their gods and incorporate them. Well, you don't want to do that. But you also don't want to force like church buildings on every corner and you have to wear a tie and a suit, you know, suit and tie to church and and make it Western. But um, he just brought Jesus. And uh, I knew Hudson, I knew, I knew, I'm like, I just can't, I got (laughs) William Carey in my mind. And uh, Hudson Taylor is a good one. Yes, indeed. Yeah, he's a good one. I thought we've already done him, but obviously Mm -hmm. it was William Carey, sorry. So, all right, well, thanks, Chuck. Music with Sarah. What song do you like? All right, babe. This is your song of the week. And uh, this goes way back. Way back. To 2002. No. no. To 1992. 1992. That's right, 92. <laughs> Everything's in the 2000s. And so uh, I'm going to hijack a little bit of your song of the week. I didn't even say what it was yet. Okay, go ahead and say what it is. Okay, the song is Come Magnify the Lord by Dave Bell. Okay, I got something to say now. Okay. Okay. So, uh, I got something to say. Yes, thank you. Uh, so this this song, it goes, I don't know why you like it. I Actually, I do know why. But okay. this song goes way back, so to 1992. Mm-hmm. I had just gotten saved in 93. And uh, when I got saved, I was like, uh, I was on fire. You know, I wanted everything, any, anything was Christian. I'm talking about it. <laughs> Sounds familiar. <laughs> but uh, so I go to the bookstores all the time, get some tapes. This is back in the tapes and some CDs. And this was the first praise and worship CD that I bought. Wow. This 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 uh, this album right here, uh, it, it got my attention because if you if you look at the album, if you're watching on YouTube, you see the album. It's kind of like a cartoonish looking thing. It's called Lion of Judah. It for is those called the listening. Lion of Judah. Yes, yeah. by Dave Bell, and he who knew, who knew ever, ever knew what happened to him because I don't know. But the you're, you're listening to the songs, and it was all right. But the last four songs were just like bang on, boom. Well, four of the last five. Four of the last five. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, whatever. Yeah. But there's like three in a row. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. And come magnify uh, and holy, holy is the Lord, whatever. Come magnify the Lord. And then it's followed by there is no other name. Oh, yeah. That's followed good by holy is your name and then magnificent God. Oh, yeah. It's just like boom, boom. Yeah. I had never heard of anything like this before in yeah. my life. You know, I went to a, a, a pretty charismatic church where we had upbeat music, we had songs, but to bring it home for the first time and listen to it, and it had yeah. a live sound mm-hmm. and it was like, whoa, I was there and I, I felt like that this was a game changer for me. From that on, that from that time on, from this CD on, I, I wouldn't say I haven't bought anything else, but it was pretty much all praise and worship since then. Yeah. So this was the the 
impetus of me switching over because you know before then I was I was Christian I just gotten saved and I grew up in the church so I I listened to Stephen Curtis Chapman and, and not, no offense to them you know but uh, jars jars of clay didn't come out yet um, you know but those guys I, I tried to listen to some of these other things and it was fine but when when I heard this I was like that's it that's my heart cry right there and that was the name of the the group is called heart cry it so is. anyway take it on from here go ahead well so this- oh one more no, I'm just okay. kidding. <laughs> so this song, this whole album, I guess, brings me back because I first heard this, what, I think I, when I first heard it, was in Guatemala. Right. And I had gone for two months. I was 14 or 15. And you missed gone. the whole O.J. Simpson thing. You have no idea what happened. You don't Pretty even know much. who that was. Um, so, but I was there just with my sister and staying at an orphanage and working there. And they had this tape. And so I'd play it and play it and play it and play it. So whenever I hear these songs, like it just takes, takes me back, back there. And I'm like, oh, wow. Like, yeah, it's maybe that amazing. is part of it. So you're going to have to indulge us out there. If you listen to this and you're like, eh, this was nothing. This was definitely a... Uh, what a nostalgic thing for us. Very much so. It was my first CD, worship CD that I got, and I was newly saved for the most part. You're in Guatemala, so we love this album. We do. It's it's an album that's right up there. But, but I mean, it is it is nostalgic, but I will say, I mean, this song, it just Come Magnify the Lord is a beautiful song, and you just it starts playing, and you just hear Come Magnify the Lord, Come Glorify His Name, and they just repeat yep. that, and you're just like, okay, I mean, whatever. But keep going because it just gets better and better and then it says all glory and honor be unto the precious lamb all blessing and power be unto the great I am and then it it builds up to this part where they sing king of kings king of kings lord of lords prince of peace the one we adore we give you praise forevermore king of kings lord of lords yeah and that's kind of what we do when we get together as a group but I don't care what size of church you have you you we, we're just magnifying the Lord. We want to worship Him. Yeah. And it is just cool. And, and it's a live sound, which was new back then. It like was It new. was very new. And uh, so then it goes into the next one. There is no other name. There it, is it, no it other just name. Was like, it's a perfect transition. So when you do listen to this, you got to listen to the you next gotta one. You got to listen to all four of those songs right. in a row. And just, I mean, to me, they, they stand the test of time. Like I've listened to them yep. throughout the years again and again. And just recently listening to it again. And I'm like, man, this is just. If you can't listen to these four songs and enter into the heavenlies, then I don't know what. what, what, Come on. Yeah, seriously. (laughs) What are we talking about? It may not be your style and it may be a little old, but come on, man. What are we talking about? Yeah, these are great songs. So I thought I'd introduce them to people out there. I'm assuming most people probably don't know about them. Most people probably don't because Heart Cry wasn't one of the more popular ones. They they started, they they produced a few CDs and then just kind of went away after a few years. Mm -hmm. Uh, Dennis Jernigan was one of the the later ones and then they just kind of went away and uh i love all the heart cry yeah it, it is uh, some of them are kind of cheesy and uh, but i just love them all and, and, and to um, be fair even with this album like you can go and listen to the songs at the beginning and they're fun they're upbeat yep. happy songs so i like those too but i thought i'd point these yeah, out these, this so. one's great so specifically this song mac Come magnify, Come magnify the Lord. the Lord. This is on the album Lion of Judah by Heart Cry. Look, look up Dave Bell, something yep. like that. Yep. You could probably only find it on YouTube. I don't know, Spotify. It's, it's on Spotify. Okay. I'm yep. sure it's on YouTube. I would guess Apple Music. I yeah, check it so. out because it is it is great. I think we've already done another Heart Cry one. Did we do the Dennis Jernigan one? We did it, Dennis Jernigan. Yeah, a long time ago. So this is going to take you back a few years. We're talking 30 years. Yeah. So it, it's, it has that sound, but get over it. It's a great thing. Go listen to it. The Mike Charleston Show is brought to you by Fellowship of Believers. For more information, go to our website at fellowshipofbelievers.org. Thank you for listening. We hope we have encouraged you to stand strong in the Lord Jesus and grow in Him.